Oh, man. I am absolutely stuffed. Oh. I'm not stuffed with food from Thanksgiving. No, no, no. You see, I'm actually stuffed with the National Ninja League. Welcome to Ninja Lab. We have a jam-packed episode this week as we'll be going over eight different qualifiers, starting with Ninja Street Obstacle Academy. For the elite female division, in second place was Jessica Helmer. Jessica was looking very strong early on, getting through just a plethora of challenging grip holds and making her way through a tricky balance obstacle as well. However, after the salmon letter, she tried to transition to the cane for a cane lane, but unfortunately she was unable to maintain her grip on the cane and cost herself a potential first place. Yeah, come on. And in first place was Elena Borges. Elena also fell in the same spot of the cane slider. However, she reached the obstacle about 31 seconds faster than Jessica did. There wasn't any real determining point where she was able to go faster. It was just an overall higher efficiency than Jessica's run. Even though Elena did have a close call on the balance section, she was able to persevere and secure herself first place qualification for the Southeast Regional Final. Congratulations to Elena, and because Jessica had already qualified, Caitlin Bergstrom qualifies for the Southeast Regional Final as well. For the Elite Male Division, it turned into a four-way race towards the 12th obstacle. In second place was Joshua Aurur, Joshua had a very calm demeanor throughout the entire course. The bathrobe ninja looked comfortable and even on obstacles with reverse grabs, which looked very impressive as he pulled it off. And he was the second fastest to complete the 11th obstacle, Precisions. However, he could have earned first place because unlike the person in first, he was able to make the initial transition from the dipper to the rings. But, part of the way through the ring obstacle, instead of being able to do a dismount, he slipped off and potentially cost him first place. But the good news is that he still qualifies for the Southeast Regional Final. And in first place was Caleb Bergstrom. Unlike Josh, Caleb was unable to make the initial transition from the slider to the rings, but the checkpoint was completing the precision obstacle beforehand, and he did so approximately 14 seconds faster than Josh. I feel like the main difference was the cane slider, as Caleb was able to make a big transition to save a lot of time. And he was able to make his way through the Iron Maiden obstacle noticeably faster as well. I feel like those two points were the key difference for Caleb earning first place and Joshua earning second. Similar to his sister, Caleb qualifies for the Southeast Regional Final. If you're interested in competing in the National Ninja League this season, go to NationalNinja.com to look up the full schedule of upcoming qualifying events. Now, let's look at the results for Freedom Gymnastics and Obstacle Training. For the Elite Female Division, in second place was Avery Glantz. Avery had a bit of a struggle early on on the slider rider trying to get that dismount, but she was able to persevere, stay calm, and clear the obstacle. 
Then afterwards, she was looking good and was able to make her way through the challenging flying cliffhangers. However, when transitioning to the hole in the wall, the jumping spider-esque obstacle, she was unable to stick the landing. However, due to the NNL rules, because she touched the walls, she counted as clearing the flying cliffhangers. And good news too, because that allowed her to secure second place and nine more points in the elite division for the Northeast Regional. Good. Remember, feet in and then get the hands pressed. Get those feet in the hands. She did clear that one, though. Yeah, she did clear that one. And in first place was Ava Colasanti. Simply put, Ava went further than any other woman of this qualifier, and she did so quite quickly as well. She was able to complete more obstacles than Avery in a faster time. That's quite a good look. Ava was stellar throughout the flying cliffhangers and got through hole in the wall with no problem. However, when attempting the bungee bars, she unfortunately got bounced off and ended her impressive run right there. For the elite male division, in second place was Connor Claffey. Connor looked very strong throughout the entire course at Freedom Gymnastics, which has some pretty clever obstacles, including a section that allowed competitors to go forward and then back the same way they came through a hallway. But he even looked very impressive on the cliffhanger section, was able to make a well dismount. And despite having to face such grueling obstacles as the swinging doorknobs and some hanging bowling pins, he was able to clear the sideways obstacle and reach the Peggy Monster. Now the Peggy Monster is a staple at Freedom Gymnastics and he was able to beat the first half of that obstacle. But when he had to face the bomb peg section of the monster, he unfortunately slipped off right away. I can't blame him. I would be tired too if I was on a course for almost five minutes. But the good news is that Connor qualifies for the Northeast Regional Finals. Nice. Keep breathing, man. And in first place was Josiah Pippel. The young Josiah was just smooth throughout the entirety of course and was able to do some big transitional dismounts off of some of the early obstacles like the waterworks and the bungee bar. The key here is that he was able to reach the bomb peg section of the Peggy Monster about 8 seconds faster than Connor. So even though they failed in the exact same location, Josiah's ability to get there just a little bit faster is the key difference that allowed him to earn first place 10 points in the Northeast region. And because Josiah had already qualified, Max Feinberg qualifies for the Northeast regional final. Hey, it's now time for the comment question of the week. My question for you is, what are you thankful for in the world of Ninja? Leave your answers in the comments down below. Now then, let's take a look at the results for Ninja Quest. 
For the elite female division, in second place was Caitlin Bergstrom. The Ninja Quest course was very long and demanding physically, and Caitlyn was able to fight her way through a good portion of the course. Unfortunately, when taking on the fidget spinners, she was unable to bridge the gap from the first spin spinner to the second, and she was eliminated at that portion of the course. And in first place was Rachel Brown. The former female points leader was able to add to her impressive resume of victories with another one at Ninja Quest. And even though she was able to reach the second fidget spinner, she was unable to maintain her grip and was unfortunately taken out at that obstacle. But the good news is that she reached it approximately 12 seconds faster than Caitlyn, earning her 10 more points and qualification for the Southeast Regional Final. For the elite male division, in second place was Jacef Codswin. Now, Ninja Quest had a really stacked field of top competitors, and Jason was able to beat everyone except for only one person. He was able to go slow and steady throughout the entire course, but unfortunately time was just too tight for him to handle, as he was able to clear the skate park obstacle with less than three seconds left on the clock. It doesn't matter though because he would have failed the next obstacle anyway, but it would have been nice to have seen him co potentially complete the entire course. But the good news is that he qualifies for the Southeast Regional Final. And in first place was Vance Walker. Vance was able to just surpass a large group of impressive talents here at Ninja Quest on what was quite frankly a very daunting obstacle uh, course. Overall, the obstacles ranged from physically demanding to precision based and ultimately only two people were able to pass the Iron Maiden dungeon type obstacle and ultimately, Vance was able to clear the letterbox slot, get past the skate park uh, faster than Jason did. With approximately 30 seconds left on the clock, he attempted the final obstacle of the wing nuts, but he came up just short, failing on the final section of the final obstacle. But the good news is he qualifies for the Southeast Regional Finals. <laughs> If you would like to watch the live streams of all the qualifying events from all different age ranges, not just the Elite Division, go to our Facebook page where we do live streams of every single qualifier that is happening. And you can also go to our YouTube channel to check out the best runs and some of the qualifiers are occurring there as well on a rare occasion. But for now, let's take a look at the results for Syracuse Ninja Barracks. For the elite female division, in second place and third place overall was Rachel Goldstein. Rachel showed why she is considered one of the Fantastic Four as she powered through the course with strength and gusto as she was able to get through many of the course's challenging obstacles along the way. In fact, she was only one of three people to make it through Mind the Rona, which included a barrage of tricky precision laches. 
she was able to get through it. And she was looking good on the course overall, but unfortunately, when she got to the floating monkey, she slipped off right away, probably due to exhaustion. However, that was good enough for second place and nine more points on her standings total. And in first place was McKinley Pierce. The former points leader made her return to the National Ninja League with an impressive run. In fact, she had the second best run overall from everyone in the competition. McKinley had an extremely close call on the Rockaway, barely clearing that obstacle, but just, just edging through and clearing it, which helped her do so well throughout the rest of the course. She was able to power her way through the floating monkeys and clear that obstacle with only five seconds left on the clock to cement her first place victory. But unfortunately, that time meant that she could not finish the rest of the course. She qualifies for the Midwest Regional Final. Yeah, McKinley. For the elite male division, in second place was Joseph Savistano. Joseph had a impressive uh, go through the scooters, but then immediately had a rocky go through the slack lines. And there was a few m mixes of just weird and shaky dismounts and then s calm and smooth dismounts as well. However, Speed was a good enough actor as he was one of the few people to even reach my the Rona, but unfortunately when transferring to the first fidget spinner, he just couldn't hold on and he went down at that part of the course. But the good news is that he qualifies for the Midwest Regional Final. And in first place was Aiden Wood. Aiden had two of the best qualities a ninja could have. He was fast and he was smooth. Basically everything he did in the course was pitch perfect. He was performing fancy skips on some of the earlier obstacles and you could actually hear the audience shout with glee on how impressive his run looked. It's hard to criticize anything that he did because he made everything look so flawless and easy along the way. Aiden was the only person to clear the entire course and he did so with more than two minutes left on the clock. That is impressive. Because Aiden had already qualified for the Midwest Regional Final, Adam Cole qualifies as well. Oh, 
Make sure you follow the National Ninja League on Instagram where you can see photos and updates from all things National Ninja League as well as some things that could affect the future. Ooh. But now, let's take a look at Iron Grip Ninja. For the Elite Female Division, in second place is Carissa Kozal. Carissa made it past the line leader, but unfortunately the big bouncy balls took her out early. But she does qualify for the Midwest Regional Finals. That's the tricky one here. Just gotta take a breath, take your time. Make sure you got your foot in there. There we go. Oh, no! Good. And in first place was Tegan Robo. Tegan was a fighter on this course. There was a section where she was on a barrel trying to keep her balance while holding onto a rope and she just kept fighting because she was struggling to maintain her balance but after a long battle she was able to persevere and get past the obstacle and by getting further than any other woman she earns herself first place and qualifies for the Midwest Regional but on the course itself when trying to do a transitional movement across a horizontal pipe she unfortunately lost her grip as time was running out on her left. cruising along make her way up to the ring you got it Tegan oh, and takes a spill good run for Tegan there good run for the elite male division in second place was Sam Folsom Sam was looking confident through a majority of the course and even though he had a very close call on the dismount for catch and release, he was able to officially clear the obstacle. Unfortunately, when attempting the tricky doorknob balance obstacle, he was unable to keep his footing steady and he was eliminated at that point of the course. But the good news is that he qualifies for the Midwest Regional Final. Oh! oh. Gotta be nice and slow. Take your time on that balance here. Oh, and it gave out. That's a very difficult balance. And in first place was Noah Busher. The young Noah was going at a pace that was, in fact, slower than Sam. However, sometimes slow and steady wins the race, as Noah was the only person who was able to complete that challenging minefield that was the doorknob balancer. And with the buzzer beating down, he was able to slide through the final obstacle with grace and passion and was able to complete the course with less than four seconds left on the clock. Because Noah had already qualified for the Midwest final, Elijah Browning is the beneficiary and qualifies for the Midwest regional final. Awesome finish right there. So Iron Grip Ninja actually did two qualifiers two days in a row. Yes, you can do that. The one that we just watched took place on November 14th, and now we're gonna take a look at the one that took place on November 15th. So let's take a look at Iron Grip Ninja. Again, for the elite female division in second place was Jennifer Stefano. She looked er good early on, but unfortunately she touched her hand on the steps, uh, which was a disqualification. But she did qualify for the Midwest Regional Final. And in first place was Tegan Rubal. Tegan was able to get deeper in the course than any other female competitor that day, but unfortunately when facing the tumbling monkeys, she was unable to hook the net and it proved to be her downfall. A lot of competitors have been skipping. The last oh, good try though. For the elite male division, in second place was Cameron Baumgarter. 
the bomb exploded onto the course early on, and good thing too, because the obstacle that he eventually failed, titled Jumanji, was an obstacle that many people failed. But speed was a factor because he was the fastest of all the people who failed that obstacle, earning him second place. The Jumanji obstacle itself is this crazy balance obstacle that requires the ninjas to swing around while keeping their balance. It's a really interesting mix between speed and balance and technique and I really like it. But anyway, Cameron qualifies for the Midwest Regional Final. Oh, and in first place was Elijah Browning. Elijah continues to show why the young guns should not be overlooked by being the only person to complete the Jumanji obstacle. He was able to get a good push off early on and even though he had to wiggle his way to the end about the last, I'd say, quarter of the way, he was able to complete the obstacle and do what no one else was able to do that day, automatically earning him first place. Unfortunately, he immediately failed uh, to Manji, which was the exact same obstacle, but asked to do it again. But who cares? He already won at that point. Because Elijah had already qualified for the Midwest Regional Final, Ryan Sanders qualifies as well. I told you this was a jam-packed episode. Now let's take a look at the results for Power Sports. For the elite female division, in first place was Isabella Wakeham. Now, even though Isabella was uncontested, she ended up finishing third place overall out of the entire contestant pool for the elite division. And she simply showed that she is not someone to be overlooked when it comes to the South Central Regional Finals because Isabella conquered this course with strength and discipline. She was able to get through so many of the upper body obstacles and was in total control of her body. Unfortunately, when she got to the pillar hop on a trampoline, she lost control of her body and was eliminated at that point of the course. But still, a very impressive run from Isabella. For the elite male division, in second place was Jonathan Banj. JB was looking really good throughout this entire course, and this course was a banger in terms of difficulty. 14 obstacles he reached, and I don't blame him for failing where he did, but the way he failed was just a little bit disappointing for him, I imagine, because he was hanging on some rings where he accidentally placed a foot down on a out of bounds zone and unfortunately that ended his run but the good news is that he qualified for the south central regional final nice man bump up you're good you're good And in first place was Kyle Ackle. I was simply so impressed by Kyle. This course was 16 obstacles long, and Kyle was able to clear every single one of them. It took 6 minutes and 18 seconds to do it, and gosh darn it, he needed every single second to do it, because this was not a pushover course. It was demanding. 
It was draining and Kyle was able to push through the entire course and honestly it looked like he had more of the tank. He could have added a few more obstacles and he might have been able to clear them. I think when the South Central finals come around, Kyle might be a favorite to win that regional. But because he had already qualified for the South Central regional previously, Derek Brown benefits and now is part of the South Central final as well. Oh man, I don't know if I can handle any more ninja, but I'm certainly going to try. Now we're going to wrap things up with the results of the Grit Ninja, which is a gym that I personally go to sometimes. For the elite female division, in second place was Rachel de Guts. Rachel put on a strong performance early on in the course, which by the way features the second pegboard dragon in this episode, and she was able to get her way through the first half of the obstacles. Uh, however, when she was faced with uh, the flywheels uh, cliffhanger combo, she was unable to hold on to the reverse grab, which was a real Achilles heel for the women, and she was eliminated at that point. But it's good enough for second place and nine more points. And as a result of Rachel already qualifying, Sheila Williams qualifies for the New England Regional Final. And in first place was Addie Herman, who adds another victory underneath her belt by becoming the only woman to defeat the Fly High obstacle when she was able to grab onto that reversed grab cliffhanger. And she was able to clear the obstacle as well as the hazard run that followed afterwards. Unfortunately for Addie, when faced with the obstacle, she was unable to make the grab to the perpendicular barrel and she ended up going down at that point of the course but still another strong impressive run from Addy showing why she is one of the favorites early on to win the entire championship For the elite male division, in second place was Joseph Meisner. Joseph showed why the young guns continue to rise up in this season, as he earned himself nine more points in his season by finishing the entire course. Simply put, Joseph looked smooth throughout the entire course and showed technique that normal people would expect out of a grizzled veteran ninja, not someone who is supposedly a rookie, even though Joseph has been doing this for quite some time now. So, will he become a future NNL champion? Time will only tell. But because Joseph had already qualified, Connor Galvin qualifies for the New England Regional Final. And in first place is the defending National Ninja League World Champion, the weatherman, Joe Moroski. Joseph may have had youth, but Joe proved why he is the champ. And even though it took him a few attempts, he qualifies for the New England Regional with a lightning fast run through the entire course, which started with an impressive move on the pegboard dragon, which he just managed to bust through that entire thing. And on fly high, he skipped the first flywheel, made it just directly to the second, and he flew up that 16-foot wart wall at the end of the course. Simply put, Joe showed that he is here to go back to back, and he is determined to win. This is going to be really close. One, Thank 
you all very much for watching. If you want to watch full runs from this season, make sure you check out our official playlist. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.